Hey there, electronics enthusiasts. Today I'll break down the fascinating world of PN junction diodes, focusing on forward bias and reverse bias. Let's dive in. First up, forward bias. Imagine connecting the positive terminal of a battery to the P-type side of the diode and the negative terminal to the N-type side. This setup reduces the width of the depletion region. That's the area where mobile charge carriers are scarce. With a narrower depletion region, it becomes much easier for current to flow through the diode. Essentially, the electric field encourages holes in the P region and electrons in the N region to move towards each other. Once the applied voltage exceeds the threshold, usually around 0.7 volts for silicon diodes, the diode conducts significantly. So, in forward bias, the diode acts like a gate, allowing current to pass through smoothly. Now let's flip things around to reverse bias. Here you connect the positive terminal to the N-type side and the negative terminal to the P-type side. This increases the width of the depletion region, creating a stronger barrier that prevents current flow under normal conditions. In this mode, the diode ideally blocks current, though a tiny leakage current, known as reverse saturation current, might still flow. However, if the reverse voltage climbs too high and hits the breakdown voltage, the diode could start conducting a large reverse current. This can potentially damage the diode if it's not designed to handle such currents. To sum it up, in forward bias, the diode conducts, allowing current to flow. In reverse bias, the diode blocks current flow, except for a small leakage current until it reaches breakdown voltage. That's the lowdown on forward and reverse bias in PN junction diodes. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe for more electronics insights. Thanks for watching. See you next time.